Hey everybody, David the AI Guide here. Welcome to the AI Guide where we focus on the human impact of AI. And we have nice positive stories today following up on what was a pretty tough episode last one. AI is like everything else. It will have very, very good things to it and potentially very, very bad things to it. We talked about some of the potential bad things last time. This time, the good, all in medical. So medicine is going to be hugely impacted in a very, very positive way by AI. And we have two great examples of that today. So the first story, at the age of only 30, Anne suffered a brain stem stroke that left her severely paralyzed. So this is a stroke in the back of your brainstem right here. Not good. For the next five years, Anne went to bed each night afraid she would die in her sleep. It took years of physical therapy before she could move her facial muscles enough to even laugh or cry. Still, the muscles that would have allowed her to speak remained immobile. Overnight, everything was taken from me, she said as she, she typed this out. Today, Anne is helping researchers at UC San Francisco and UC Berkeley develop new BCI technology, brain-computer interface, that could one day allow people like her to communicate more naturally through a digital avatar that resembles a person. It is the first time that either speech or facial expressions have been synthesized directly from brain signals. The system can also decode these signals into text at nearly 80 words a minute. So this is a massive breakthrough, and I got this because I get a research summary from the UC system where a lot of breakthrough work is done. Edward Chang, MD, Chair of Neurological Surgery at UCSF, who has worked on the technology BCI for more than a decade, hopes this latest research breakthrough will lead to an FDA-approved system that enables speech from brain signals in the near future. Our goal is to restore a full embodied way of communicating to people who have suffered devastating injuries. So Anne was a high school math teacher in Canada before her stroke in 2005. She has what she calls locked-in syndrome, which is just like it sounds, she wrote. You're fully cognizant, you have full sensation, all five senses work, but you are locked inside a body where no muscles work. I learned to breathe on my own again over time, I now have full neck movement, my laugh returned, I can cry and read, and over the years my smile is returned, and I am able to wink and say a few words. As she recovered, she realized she could use her own experiences to help other people. I want patients there to see me and know their lives are not over now. She learned about Chang's study in 2021. Chang at that time was working with a person named Poncho, so a person has to actually attempt to speak for the system to pick up the signals. Poncho became the first person living with paralysis to demonstrate it was possible to decode speech brain signals into full words. With Anne, Chang's team attempted something even more ambitious, decoding her brain signals into the richness of speech, along with the movements that animate a person's face during conversation. To do this, the team implanted a paper-thin re rectangle of 253 electrodes onto the surface of her brain over areas they previously discovered were critical for speech. The cable, plugged into a port fixed to Anne's head, connected the electrodes to a bank of computers. For weeks, Anne worked with the team to train the system's AI algorithms to recognize her unique brain signals for speech. Her husband said, it was exciting to see her go from, we're going to just try this, and then seeing it happen quicker than probably anyone thought. That is the beauty and exponential nature of AI right there. Very rapid progress. Rather than train the AI to recognize whole words from brain signals, the researchers created a system that decodes words from smaller components called phenems, these are the subunits of speech. Using this approach, 
the computer only needed to learn 39 phonemes to decipher any word in English. That's remarkable that only 39 sounds make up all of English. This both enhanced the system's accuracy and made it three times faster than if it had used full words. The accuracy, speed, and vocabulary are crucial. To synthesize and speech, the team devised an algorithm for synthesizing speech which they personalized to sound like her voice before the injury by using a recording of Anne speaking at her wedding. My daughter was one when I had my entry. She has no idea what I sound like. The team animated Anne's avatar with the help of software that simulates and animates muscle movements of the face, developed by Speech Graphics, a company that makes AI-driven facial animation. The researchers created customized machine learning processes. We're making up for the connections between her brain and vocal tract that have been severed by the stroke. When Anne first used this system to speak and move the avatar's face in tandem, I knew that this is going to be something that would have a real impact. An important next step for the team is to create a wireless version that would not require Anne to be physically connected by cable to the BCI. For Anne, helping to develop the technology has been life changing. No kidding, and check that out. When BCI goes wireless, everyone can have it, and that is expected to happen soon. So the second article, AI tool pinpoints genetic mutation, mutations that cause disease. Google DeepMind has wielded its revolutionary protein structure prediction AI AlphaFold in the hunt for genetic mutations that cause disease. A new tool based on the AlphaFold network can accurately predict which of the identified mutations in proteins are likely to cause health conditions. We'll see why that's important in a second. The AI network called Alpha Missense is a step forward. It's one of many techniques in development that aim to help researchers and ultimately physicians interpret people's genomes to find the cause of a disease. So this is the root of what is called personalized medicine, meaning at some point in the future, sick people will be treated specifically for them based on their genome, proteins, and everything instead of one cure that has a lot of side effects but works on a lot of people. Many of the genetic mutations that directly cause a condition, such as those responsible for cystic fibrosis and sickle cell disease, tend to change the amino acid sequence of the protein they encode. But researchers have observed only a few million of these single letter missense mutations. Of the more than 70 million possible in the human genome, only a sliver have been conclusively linked to disease, and most seem to have no ill effect on health. So the vast majority of these have no health effects, but a few do, and they're trying to figure out which is which. To help interpret such variants of unknown significance, Researchers have developed dozens of different computational tools that can predict whether a variant is likely to cause disease. Alpha Missense incorporates existing approaches to the problem, which are increasingly being addressed by AI machine learning. Alpha Missense uses AlphaFold's intuition about a structure to identify where disease-causing mutations are likely to occur within a protein. Alpha Missense also incorporates a type of new neural network inspired by large language models, LLMs, like ChatGPT that have been trained on millions of protein sequences instead of words called a protein language model. They are useful for variant prediction because they have learned which sequences are plausible and which are not. So, you know, the, the AI can make up sequences that can't happen in nature, and they're figuring out which can happen and which ones, therefore, might produce diseases. This is a great example of what I told you in one of the TED videos that they said over and over again in TED AI is the direction that AI is heading. Very specialized LLMs for specific purposes here to predict disease. 
DeepMind's network seems to outperform other computational tools at discerning variants known to cause disease from those that don't. The researchers used alpha missense to create a catalog of every possible missense mutation in the human genome. 79 million, no human could do that, right? Determining that 57% are likely benign and 32% may cause disease. So almost two thirds are benign and a third cause disease. But will this alpha missense be the best predictor in two or three years, said a geneticist at the Human Genetics Unit in Edinburgh, most likely not, that AI is advancing so rapidly that better tools are coming in two to three years. Computational predictions currently have a minimal role in diagnosing genetic diseases. As these models get better, I think more people will be inclined to trust them. Tools such as Alpha Missense must be rigorously evaluated using good performance metrics before being applied in the real world. So this is R&D right now, but will have a dramatic impact on disease treatment in the future. So two great pieces of good news, AI and medicine right now. So please like, subscribe, and share. Please support this channel on Patreon. I need your help and support. The feedback from going to TED-AI was very positive. It had very big impact on this channel. For me to be able to go to other AI conferences, I have to have that support. I cannot self-fund this whole thing, so please help. You guys are the best. Thank you so much to all my subscribers for getting us over a thousand subscribers. I deeply appreciate your support, and I'm working on the watch time metric. So thanks so much. Take care. We'll see you next time. Bye.